Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this video, I will be explaining you how to diagnose diabetes mellitus and pre-diabetes based on the different types of blood glucose that we do. Now the numbers that I am giving here, they are all from American Diabetes Association, the criteria that has been modified in 2014 for the diagnosis of diabetes and also pre-diabetes. So as I explained different blood uh, testing on uh, glucose, so I will be giving you the normal range and then into the pre-diabetes and then into the diabetes mellitus. Now first let's get into the fasting plasma glucose. So the different types of glucose are the different types of tests that we do here for diagnosing diabetes or pre-diabetes. We have fasting plasma glucose, postprandial plasma glucose, a random plasma glucose and HbA1c which is a glycated hemoglobin. Now the fasting plasma glucose. Fasting plasma glucose basically it is taken, a blood sample is taken when a person has uh, been on fasting condition for at least 8 hours. That means for at least 8 hours person has not taken anything that has calories. So except water person should have not taken anything other than that. So the minimum is 8 hours. Otherwise, uh, 12 hours is the maximum thing. So, 8 to 12 hours of fasting. So, that is when the blood sample is taken and uh, blood glucose is analyzed. Usually, blood glucose is analyzed by glucose oxidase method. So, uh, if the blood glucose comes out to be less than 100 milligrams per deciliter. So, all the numbers that I will be writing here, they will be in milligrams per 100 ml. So it is all in milligrams per deciliter, milligrams per 100 ml, all the numbers. Now if it is less than 100 milligram per deciliter, that is considered to be a normal fasting plasma glucose. Now if the fasting plasma glucose is uh, more than 100 and uh, less than 126 and that is what is referred as a pre-diabetes. Pre-diabetes is uh, before diabetes. So if the person has got this particular, this uh, range of blood fasting plasma glucose, so it means uh, this, this type of person uh, may be uh, in future can uh, develop uh, diabetes mellitus. It's a high risk of uh, diabetes mellitus case there. Now, if the fasting plasma glucose exceeds uh, 126 or 126, so 126 or more than that, more than or equal to 126, that's the right, uh, that's the diabetes mellitus there. So just one sample of fasting plasma glucose more than or equal to 126 itself is a criteria to diagnose that person having diabetes. Now let's move on to see our next uh, blood glucose uh, that is fasting uh, postprandial plasma glucose. This postprandial plasma glucose normally it is uh, done after 2 hours of uh, intake of 75 grams of glucose in 200 ml of water. So this is which is referred as oral glucose tolerance test that is a OGTT oral glucose tolerance test. So in, in this oral glucose tolerance test 2 hour glucose if it has to be less than 140 that's the normal if it is less than 140 milligram per deciliter that is considered as normal if it is uh, more than 140 but less than 200 that is considered to be a pre-diabetic range and if it exceeds or if it is equal to 200 or more than that that is considered as a diabetes that itself is a criteria for diagnosing diabetes. Now coming with the random plasma glucose. Random plasma glucose means the person is not in any dietary control here neither in fasting nor in postprandial are not uh, really uh, sure about his uh, diet. So the person as he walks in and you are uh, doing the blood glucose level. So that is simply referred as random plasma glucose. And usually random plasma glucose, it is uh, less than 140 if it is considered normal. And if it is uh, more than or equal to 200 and along with that, if there is three P's there, polyuria, polyphasia and polydipsia. Polyuria, polyuria means uh, uh, frequent uh, urination, polyphagia, too much eating or uh, too frequent eating and uh, polydipsia, person is thirsty all the time and drinking a lot of water. So polyuria, polyphagia, polydipsia along with that 
the random plasma glucose if it is more than or equal to 200 mg per deciliter that is the criteria for diagnosing diabetes mellitus now hba1c glycated hemoglobin glycated hemoglobin it measures uh, average blood glucose level for 4 to 6 weeks of duration because uh, red blood cell survives for uh, means uh, yes red blood cell survives for 120 days so hba1c basically it is used for long term measurement of glucose so HbA1c level normally it should be less than 5.7 percent that's a gram percent so 5.7 percent normally normal uh, range is uh, less than 5.7 percent if it is uh, more than 5.7 percent and less than 6.5 percent that is considered to be a pre-diabetes range and if it exceeds or if it is equal to 6.5 or more than that, it is the diabetes mellitus. So, now we have four parameters here. So, any one of them, if they are, if it is positive, that is a criteria for diagnosing diabetes mellitus. Remember this, not just, not all of them together. Any one parameter, if it comes out to be positive, like more than 126 fasting plasma glucose that itself is a diagnosis of diabetes mellitus that helps posting postprandial plasma glucose more than or equal to 200 that itself will give the diagnosis of diabetes mellitus random plasma glucose more than or equal to 200 along with polyuria polyphagia polydipsia itself is a diagnosis for diabetes mellitus and glycated hemoglobin more than or equal to 6.5 percent itself is a diagnosis for diabetes mellitus. So, these are all the numbers according to American Diabetic Association. So, got to remember all these numbers which are of course important because these are the things which will uh, differentiate from normal pre-diabetes and pri uh, diabetes. So, most importantly the pre-diabetes, so pre-diabetes if you recognize, identify pre-diabetic patient uh, person uh, lifestyle therapy is most important, lifestyle changes, lifestyle modification. So, it's important here so that uh, we prevent pre-diabetes going into diabetes. So, that's all about uh, ADA criteria for diagnosis of uh, pre-diabetes and diabetes. I hope this video has helped you in uh, revising or getting these uh, numbers here and uh, which helps in diagnosis of pre-diabetes, diabetes and also know the normal range here. Thanks for watching and uh, see you in my next video.